this is the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. One of the 10 most haunted places on earth that you can go to. We're going to go inside this lunatic asylum and see what we can find. Are you ready, Paula? As ready as I'm gonna be. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum is what is known as a Kirkbride mental institution. It was designed by the renowned architect Richard Andrews following the Kirkbride plan. The brainchild of Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride, these asylums were supposed to represent the very best of psychiatric medicine. Calling for long rambling wings, arranged in a staggering formation, ensuring that each of the connecting structures received an abundance of therapeutic sunlight and fresh air. The Kirkbride plan would influence the construction of the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum and 72 other hospitals across the United States. The main building, known as the Kirkbride, is the largest hand-cut stone masonry building in North America the second largest in the world next to the Kremlin. Standing from end to end, it is almost one quarter of a mile long and contains two and a half miles of hallways. The hospital was also intended to be self-sufficient with a farm, dairy, water supply, and even its own cemetery, all located on 666 acres of land. Yes, that's right, 666 acres. The original hospital, designed to house 250 patients, reached its peak in the 1950s, with 2,400 patients housed in overcrowded and often horrific conditions. Finally, by 1994, both changes in the treatment of mental illness and the physical deterioration of the facility ultimately forced the closure of the hospital, inflicting a devastating effect on the local economy, from which Western West Virginia has yet to recover. Operator lifts the upper eyelid, inserts the locotome into the conjunctival sac, and aims it parallel with the bony ridge of the nose. He drives the point through the orbital plate, and at a depth of five centimeters, swings the handle far laterally. Patients at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum were already indiscriminately subjected to several controversial psychiatric treatments, including electroconvulsive shock therapy, contrast baths, and forced sterilization. However, none were as notorious as transorbital lobotomies. From 1948 to 1952, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum became the primary site of the West Virginia Lobotomy Project, nicknamed Operation Ice Pick by the local media and headed by Dr. Walter Freeman, the infamous neurologist who popularized the crude ice pick technique in America. Unlike traditional prefrontal lobotomies, which involved drilling through the skull, the ice pick lobotomy was performed by placing a slender rod called an orbitoclast into the corner of each eye socket and striking the instrument with a mallet. Breaking through the eye socket, the rod was twisted in a methodical sequence in order to sever connective tissue in the brain's prefrontal cortex. Instead of traditional anesthesia, electroconvulsive shock treatment was used, inducing a seizure in order to render the unfortunate victim unconscious. Freeman, who had no formal surgical training, performed or directly supervised around 775 lobotomies in West Virginia, 70 of which occurred 
at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Freeman continued to perform transorbital lobotomies well into the 1960s, even after the introduction of the drug Thorazine, which was introduced, making surgical lobotomies obsolete. Inflicting immeasurable amounts of pain and suffering into thousands of individuals, Freeman ultimately performed nearly 3,500 lobotomies nationwide. Roughly 14% of his victims died from the procedure. Across the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum's 150-year existence as an operational mental institution, an estimated 30,000 people died within its walls. Untold thousands are buried in unmarked graves on the hill overlooking the asylum. The state of West Virginia attempted to exhume and identify the bodies, but this endeavor was discontinued after 4,000 sets of remains were found. Given its gruesome and tragic history, the asylum is popular among paranormal enthusiasts and has been featured on Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters, the Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures, and Destination America's Paranormal Lockdown. One of Trans-Allegheny's most active entities is that of a little girl named Lily. Believed to have been born in the asylum around the turn of the century, Lily tragically died of pneumonia at the age of nine. Her room, located on Ward 4, is adorned with toys and trinkets to entertain her playful spirit. Her favorite item is a pink music box, which will mysteriously play an eerie melody all on its own. Rolling balls and disembodied giggles are some of the well-documented anomalies that occur in her room. Ward 2 on the second floor is another hot spot for ghostly encounters. The melancholic spirits of a double suicide are said to haunt the area where they committed their final acts. If some visitors are overwhelmed with emotions of anguish and grief, while others reportedly feel suffocated upon entering the room, shadow figures have also been seen lurking in an adjacent bathroom where a patient was stabbed 17 times. On the third floor are wards F and C, the violent male and female blocks, respectively. During Trans-Allegheny's waning years of operation, hospital administrators haphazardly grouped aggressive and docile patients together to address the troublesome overcrowding issue. This negligence was problematic for several reasons, and it ultimately led to one of the most horrific murders in asylum history. A deaf, mentally handicapped patient named Dean was placed with two vicious inmates named Joe and Big Jim. Childlike in nature, Dean was a beloved member of the hospital community. However, his immature temperament was a nuisance to Joe and Jim. One evening, the two perpetrators beat Dean for his annoying behavior and attempted to hang him with bed sheets from an overhead pipe. Dean was placed on an iron bed frame and Jim jumped on it repeatedly, crushing Dean's skull. Dean's spirit reportedly still resides in the room where he was so brutally murdered. The malevolent entities of Joe and Big Jim are also reported to roam these halls as well, pushing and scratching any unwary visitors in the area. In 2014, the popular West Virginia band Under Social filmed the music video for their new single, Dead Inside, at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. This picture was captured during the filming. If you look behind the glass, there is a ghostly figure. It is not a reflection, nor was anyone else present that could have been standing there. We have attempted to replicate this picture, 
Perhaps you can see a figure standing behind the glass behind Paul. This picture, snapped by a visitor to Trans-Allegheny, supposedly shows a ghostly figure. Can you see the figure in this image? While there is no shortage of curiosity here, these stories and events which are both frightening and enlightening represent only a mere fraction of the experiences endured by countless thousands here, many of whom remain unknown, forgotten to time. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum endures forever as a testament to their memory, somberly enigmatic and hauntingly historic.